Thanks, Tal. Just to uh, sort of give a little more background on, on some of the work I had done, I was focusing on nuclear security and nuclear safety and using a lot of tools like Earth Engine and other remote sensing tools to actually build models um, in order to better enhance safety and security of nuclear facilities. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Skybox. Um, so just for a little background, for those who don't know about Skybox, the company was founded in 2009 by four Stanford uh, students with a bold idea of building uh, smaller and cheaper high resolution uh, satellites and building out a constellation to allow for uh, frequent revisits and, and capturing images of, of uh, a single place multiple times, as, as many as multiple times a day. Um, that was pretty revolutionary in the aerospace industry. Um, you know, there, they believe, as, as is noted here, there's a lot of things that we haven't observed on Earth that can help inform uh, decision makers. And so the vision of Skybox really is to promote or to provide everyone with access on Earth uh, to timely and um, frequent imagery that will help them make uh, decisions and provide insight into patterns on Earth. Um, and so what we're really focusing on is getting that data to users, uh, these observable data to users to really uh, provide new insights and provide your own expertise um, and insight into that data. Um, so this is just kind of a quick example of what you would see from our satellite. Uh, this is Port of, Lo uh, Port of Long Beach, which has imports and exports of $100 billion a year. Uh, there are a lot of economic indicators here. This is over the course of nine days, these, these images. And so there's a lot happening, a lot changing. It really shows the importance of the frequency of, of the imagery. And so what, what our goal at Skybox, and, and let me back up for a second, we actually have two satellites up right now that are imaging. Um, we're hoping to have, or we're, our plan is to have 13 by 2017. Um, and that'll allow for uh, even more frequent revisit into places like this uh, um, every, every day. Um, and as you can see, even over the course of nine days, there's a lot of economic activity happening. And so our, our goal at Skybox and my team is to actually capture this, uh, figure out not just a way to actually see it in the imagery, but a way to actually get that data uh, in some sort of structure that users like yourselves can actually manipulate it and, and drive insight. Um, so right now we're trying to leverage uh, different technologies and computer vision and um, uh, image processing, um, which have been enhanced since we joined the Google, Google group uh, in August 2014. Um, so this is an example of us being uh, really looking at how many cars are being rolled in and rolled off a uh, terminal where they actually bring in all the new cars from Asia to the US and to the US market. Um, and here's another example where we're um, able to monitor how many shipping containers are coming in and out of the port um, on a frequent basis. Um, again, this is to, we're hoping to capture this data, um, this, uh, as they term, unstructured data, and really provide insight into it and pre, uh, put it into a format that uh, users without GIS backgrounds can actually do something with it. So things like putting it in, in, uh, into spreadsheets or, or charts to get that uh, insight um, in, in there that our team doesn't have the expertise on, but people like yourselves would be able to have some sort of insight. So with the um, Sky, uh, Google acquisition of Skybox, we've been able to partner with a lot of different and cool organizations within Google, uh, especially Earth Engine, which is one of my favorites. Uh, we're able to uh, really harness the power, the, com the computing power that Earth Engine has and use that as a platform to help us get to that uh, ultimate goal of, of um, extracting these features and, and, and data from our imagery. And uh, just to give a couple of examples, um, Earth Engine helps us make sense of change in our imagery. So this is um, on, the, on your right is a map of the um, agricultural change that happened in one of our sites over the course of a month. Um, it's, so it's a change map. Uh, the next one is helping us develop algorithms to actually extract vehicles or other features from our imagery. 
Um, and the third is helping us derive insight into what is happening. This is an image of North Korea, where I um, had previously, before joining Skybox, did a lot of work on monitoring their nuclear facilities. And this shows how you can use Earth Engine in conjunction with our data and using Landsat's thermal infrared data and actually see which facilities are operational and which ones are not. Um, that just gives you some, somewhat of an example of that. Um, and just to briefly talk about uh, Skybox for Good, which is a, a partnership that we launched with the Earth Outreach team that Christian would be the best person to talk to about. And so if you have any questions, please direct them to him. But it's a partnership uh, with NGOs and um, international organizations to actually grant them access to our imagery, our analytics, and our data to help, uh, help facilitate projects that will have a positive impact on humanity. Um, and if you have any more questions, please talk to Christian. I think this is a great initiative. Um, and then the thing that everyone's been waiting for, rather than listening to me talk, I'm going to show you some examples of our data. One of the really revolutionary and cool things that Skybox has been able to do is actually provide high, uh, high definition video from space. Um, so here's one example um, of nighttime imagery over Las Vegas. This is the Vegas Strip. Um, traditionally, nighttime imagery has been somewhere, I think, in, in 90 kilometer resolution or nine kilometers. This is about one meter. Our data ranges, the videos are one meter resolution, um, and our images are a, a little bit under a meter as well, um, GSD. All right, let me see. And this one is of a volcano which is also pretty cool. Hmm. And then let me skip ahead. And this is a time series of images over AT&T Park that we recently captured. Um, again, this shows the importance and the power of actually getting that timely and frequent imagery. I know in my, in my previous work, when you're getting images from other commercial customers, or other commercial providers, you're lucky if you could get them maybe once a week um, at best. And so a lot changes in that time, and it's very, uh, you're missing a lot. And so we, we feel that providing that timely imagery is really going to help unlock a huge data source. Here's an image of Washington, D.C., downtown D.C. Um, here's another time series of a lake in Japan that shows the ice melting and breaking. Here is the Tower of London during the um, memorial month that they have in November. And those are all the different, in the red you see around the tower is actually uh, poppies or um, paper poppies that they put in the ground. And that's it. Any questions? <laughs> So the, for your first question about um, the global coverage. Yeah. So, right, so our goal has never been to provide global coverage. It's always been to provide you know, more frequency of imagery within areas of high economic activity. Um, and you know, right now, we're focusing on getting up our first block and 13 satellites over the next year. And uh, that's, that's the path we're going. Um, we are exploring a number of different other opportunities and future uh, uh, ways of enhancing our capabilities to capture what's going on on the Earth on a daily basis. And the, and the, and the second point, um, can, can you remind me what the, what the thermal, thermal. thermal sensor, OK, right. Um, we're exploring a number of different sensors. Right now, we have four bands, so uh, blue, green, red, and near-infrared. Um, we're exploring a number of different other uh, uh, sensors to be able to enhance um, the data that we're being able to pull out. And that's, that's you know, pretty much all I can say at this point. I think that. Yeah, I was wondering in terms of um, tasking if, if there'll be a public interface where you can actually see how the, the skybox that you have where it's being tasked, you know, and what the schedule is. 
and especially for you know um, changing that in terms of uh, uh, disaster response, for example. The video seems very important for that. Sure. Um, so in terms of is there going to be a public interface similar to what I guess they have in like Digital Globe or et cetera, that you can actually see where, where things have been tasked. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I will, um, our, our product is really heading towards more of um, focusing on specific verticals that were on the commercial side that we're, that we're interested in, in really digging deep into driving data from. So um, economic indicators like shipping containers, oil tanks, cars, being able to, to um, extract data from that. Um, with our partners uh, in you know, Skybox for Good, with the, which I think Christian can, can speak to, there, you know, there's definitely the possibility of working together with partners to task the satellite in a specific area. No, we're publishing all the images that are being taken for the we're publishing all the images that are being taken for the Skybox for Good program publicly, um, and uh, they're all under a CC by attribution license, Creative Commons, so very open data, which is awesome. Um, and uh, right now, they're just being distributed to the, to the beta partners this year, but um, it's on my to-do list for later this year to put up a map so that everybody can find all of those images and use them if you want to. But that's just for a subset of the data. Um, I don't know of any plans to publish everything, but if you want to see at least where the orbital tracks are, um, that's, you know, you can find those for all satellites through, uh, through NASA. Um, and for crisis response, you know, we're definitely on top of that, and um, you know, already for Nepal, we tasked the Skybox satellites to, to capture some images uh, after the earthquake in Nepal a few months ago. So thank you. Uh, this is Anupam from the World Bank, and uh, we, we use a lot of night light data but the problem with the nightlight is that there's a lot of overglow, and we have a ways to fix it. But uh, your nightlight data uh, uh, would be very helpful in our work, and I was just wondering how we could uh, use that, and what is the acquisition strategy for your nightlight data? Sure. Um, so we really have a killer team, image processing team, uh, working with us, and they're the ones that, that do all the heavy lifting and, the, and really make the magic happen on things like the nighttime video. Um, we're still exploring a strategy on our nighttime vi video and trying to look for as many use cases as possible. And so I'd be more than happy to speak with you or put you in touch with someone on our team that um, would, really, you know, would really be interested in finding out more about you, different use cases for a nighttime, nighttime video. Um, and, and so that, you know, as, as I should say with all different uh, applications, you know, right now we're we're really open and exploring different use cases for our imagery and our video. And if any of you uh, have any incredible ideas, please feel free to share them with us. Um, you can feel free to contact me um, or come up to me after, and I can give you some more uh, um, someone who'd be able to help you from our team. That's All right, it. thanks very much, Nico.